Hello, you're watching Alpha Interview. I'm Blair Sun. A report published by Avner Pancreatic Cancer Foundation shows that without action, pancreatic cancer is likely to become Australia's second biggest cancer killer. It is thought that pancreatic cancer has not received the attention of other diseases due to low survival rates and few long-term survivals. The most common treatment remains surgery, but for more than 80% of patients, this surgery can be carried out. But now, with clinical and preclinical evidence suggesting that tocotrienol therapy could work in this cancer. And to begin today's discussion, Dr. Glenn Tong joins me in the studio. He is the CEO of Australian drug developer Azu Health Technology and has been specializing in biotech industry for over 20 years. So thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Glenn. Thank you, Blair. It's great to be here. Can you give our viewers a brief overview of Azu Health Technology and your role in the company? Sure, it's a young company. Uh, we, we've been around for only for a little while, but uh, it's a very special company in that it has two business units. Mm -hmm. uh, one which develops and sells nutraceuticals, which will produce revenue straight away. Uh, the second business unit is the development of drugs. And we've got a pipeline of four drugs, mm -hmm. uh, two targeting fatty liver disease and two targeting pancreatic cancer. My role in the company is a CEO and managing director, so my expertise is in managing intellectual property rights, commercialization of biotechnologies, so it's obviously uh, uh, very needed in, the, in, the, in both areas of the business. Yes. Uh, so, uh, and in fact, I was one of the inventors, or I was the inventor of one of the platforms that mm -hmm. we used to deliver tocotrienols. Right. Let me ask you this question. What is your current status of clinical programs on pancreatic cancer and how advanced is this drug program? We've got one drug that is in phase two clinical studies uh, in pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's very exciting. This is the phase of study where you find out whether the drug works. Yeah. And it's a, it's a tocotrienol that is delivered in a, in a more direct way than normal tocotrienols mm -hmm. and in a non-invasive way. So you don't use any needles, you don't use any surgical implants and you get the tocotrienols to the organs and the muscles and through the bloodstream directly without going through the gut and the liver first. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as you say, it's important to address pancreatic cancer because it's a great unmet need. Mm -hmm. The overall survival is low, it's about five months on the standard of care. Yes. Uh, so, th and the quality of life is poor. So what we've found, well, what others have found also is that uh, tocotrienols can address two uh, areas of pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. um, it actually I induces apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So on the one hand, it helps the cancer kill its own cells. Uh, on the other side is what uh, makes pancreatic cancer very dangerous is it gets resistant to chemotherapy very quickly. Mm -hmm. and, the and the reason for that is because the pancreatic cancer produces stem cell-like cancer cells that right. spread. Mm -hmm. The spreading is called metastasis yes. and tocotrienols have been shown to inhibit to stop the metastasis. So the approach that we're taking is improving the delivery of the tocotrienols to the cancer mm -hmm. and a two-pronged approach where you kill the cancer cells and you stop the cancer cells from spreading. Can you tell us about the demand for your clinical program? How can it be like improve overall patient survival? Well, if you take that two-pronged approach, we hope that the drug will be more efficacious than the drugs that are there now. Mm -hmm. And as, as I said, the standard of care is very poor at the moment. You, you only get about five months uh, extension of your overall survival. Yeah. Uh, so, so we hope to extend that. And also bearing in mind that the improved delivery of tocotrienols is a very safe, non-toxic way of treating cancer. Right. Uh, so, uh, so the existing drugs are chemotoxins, which are quite harsh. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of side effects. Right. So speaking of your new drug delivery technology, and I've noticed that your company has successfully developed the two programs based on that. Yes. And one is what we just said, pancreatic cancer, and the other one is uh, fatty liver disease. So how did you discover the application could work and uh, what's the concept behind it? 
Well, we actually have two delivery platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called the Transmucosal delivery, delivery Platform, which is basically going through the buckle, the, uh, the cells under your tongue and on your cheeks, and that goes straight into your bloodstream and bypasses the gut that way. We have another called the Tocotrino Pro Drug, the TPD, which we in license from Monash University. Okay. Uh, and that system, the pill actually swallowed. It goes into your um, gut, but then instead of being digested in the gut and being metabolized in the liver, mm -hmm. it goes straight through to your lymph glands in the gut and goes straight through into, into your bloodstream. So the main theme here with both delivery platforms is direct delivery of tocotrienols without needles, without surgical implants, and getting it to the places where it works. Yeah. Now, with fatty liver disease, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Fatty liver disease is very simple. You start off with a healthy liver, and what happens is fat cells accumulate, and when that accumulates, and you have reactive oxidative species, that causes inflammation. The inflammation causes scarring, which is called fibrosis. Then the fibrosis gets worse and worse until you get cirrhosis, where the cells die. So you mm -hmm. end up with a dead liver, a liver that fails, or you end up with liver cancer. So the beauty about tocotrienols is it stops it right at step one. Mm -hmm. So step one is when the fat cells cause oxidative species to circulate around and cause inflammation. Tocotrienols are very strong antioxidants in your body and it switches that oxidation off and switches off the inflammation and switches off the scarring. Mm -hmm. So we feel that uh, others have shown in the clinic, in humans, that tocotrienols are effective uh, at reducing fatty liver disease. So we think that uh, what we've seen in exercise, for example, uh, when you improve the delivery of tocotrienols using our two platforms, it actually improves the efficacy. We're hoping to see that improvement in efficacy in the fatty liver disease. Okay, so what can you see from these two programs in the market, like in a broad way? In a broad way, they're both big markets, right? Pancreatic cancer has a $4.2 billion global market. Now, it's a relatively small market, but you can capture the whole market yeah. because of that great unmet need. The standard of care is poor. Now, in the fatty liver disease side, it's a $35 billion global market. Mm -hmm. So it's a large market. And also the opportunity is huge because there's no, there's no approved drugs. So in both cases, you can make a big impact with your new drugs mm -hmm. in, in different ways. Right. Um, I see there's like a proven drugs and also you have like a nutraceutical product yeah. that's going to be launched in the US. Can you give us some more information about that? We've got two nutraceutical products, one for heart health and a really exciting one for exercise performance because it completely wipes out all that pain and suffering you get after exercise. Okay. The late onset muscle soreness, it reduces it, reduces it by 80 to 100%. Uh, it reduces after exercise soreness, it makes your muscles recover better after exercise, better and quicker. Uh, and it also increases exercise endurance and muscle power. So it does a whole lot of things to your muscles that makes exercising a lot more enjoyable and easier. Now, there are two really important things about our nutraceuticals business. Yeah. The first is it produces revenue straight away. So within three months of the close of the offer that we're making, uh, there will be revenues from the nutraceuticals. And so the revenues will help uh, drive the drug development program and be invested into the drug development program. So that's one thing, the money side. That's very the, good a revenue model. Yeah, it's a yeah. great revenue model because most biotech companies only burn money on the drug yeah, development exactly. side. They don't have that revenue making side of the business. Now the second reason why the nutraceuticals are really important for us is, as I said, We've done some clinical studies on exercise yeah. and we showed that our Trans-T3 delivery platform can actually improve efficacy in exercise related indications dramatically. Mm -hmm. So we, that's what prompted us to think, can we do this in any other indication? like pancreatic cancer yeah. or like fatty liver disease. So one technology different use and different functions. Correct, you can apply it potentially to a number of indications because tocotrienols have shown activity in cancer, mm -hmm. it's shown activity in fatty liver disease, it's shown activity in a number of things like lowering cholesterol. Yeah. So, so we want to see whether that improvement that we see in exercise mm -hmm. uh, can be repeated in some way in the other indications. 
Very interesting. So right through our discussion, I can see that the company you mentioned is quite young, but the team, the board, the scientific advisory board and management are very seasoned operators in biotech, nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals. So to help our investors to get more like information about this investment, you mentioned there's like a public offering in yes. uh, the near future. So can you tell us who will be leading the Azure team? Sure. Look, I'll give you some highlights. Uh, we have a lot of experience in biotechnology in general, uh, but pharmaceuticals and nutraceuticals in particular. Uh, for example, our non-executive chairman is Lou Pinaccio, who is also the chairman of Avita Medical, which is another ASX listed company. Uh, he's also a director on Sonic Health, uh, which is a large pathology company. Mm -hmm. uh, so my background is in commercialization of biotechnology. I've done that for 25 years. My role has, has been as Managing Director and CEO of a number of biotechnology uh, companies and organisations. So I manage clinical trials, I manage commercialisa commercialisation of intellectual property rights. Mm -hmm. On our team of scientists and, and, and management, uh, we are people who are usually not found in small companies. Mm -hmm. They usually work in large, well-established pharmaceutical companies. Now, in America, in our wholly owned subsidiary, which specializes in the manufacture and uh, sale of nutraceuticals, uh, the president and CEO there, Richard Estelala, is the ex-president and COO of a large listed uh, nutraceuticals company in America, so he knows the US nutraceuticals market extremely well. Uh, he's also got a very good track record of sales growth. Uh, Running the, uh, the clinical development side are uh, two people who uh, have got extensive experience. The CSO and Chairman of the Scientific Advisory Board, Dr. David Kingston, is ex Roche Pharmaceuticals. Uh, he spent over 30 years there. He has uh, been involved in over 80 investigations of new drugs uh, with the FDA, and he's put uh, 40 new pharmaceutical products on the market. So he has extensive experience in running. Uh, experiments from preclinical in animals mm -hmm. and, and cells, uh, cell culture to phase one all the way through to phase two, three and four. So he knows the whole lot. Mm -hmm. And on the cancer program, we have one of the top cancer researchers and physicians in the world leading that program, Dr. Richard Pastel AO. He's actually an Aussie, but based in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Pastel is one of the top cited oncologists uh, in the world. He has led more than a hundred cancer clinical studies. So to have people like Richard and David lead these types of programs, that says something. They are really putting their name and their experience and their, their reputations on the line on, the, on top of these two programs, the cancer program and the fatty liver disease program. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have some expectation that, that, that something will work out of these programs. Right. So with the public offering, how much will you raise and uh, where the funds gonna go? We're raising a minimum of $7 million, $7 million Australian dollars, uh, and up to a maximum of $10 million. Uh, the funds will be used for launching the nutraceuticals uh, and also advancing the clinical and preclinical programs in fatty liver disease and pancreatic cancer. And I should say that uh, so far we've had an irrevocable letter of offer from a, a strategic cornerstone investor already. Mm -hmm. It's only been two days into the raise uh, of $4 million. Right. The last but not the least, um, for the investors, what are the like, important milestones that should be, uh, they should be looking at? The investment milestones? Sure. Uh, within the first year, they will see revenues. That's very unusual in a biotech company. Mm -hmm. So we'll have revenues from the nutraceuticals company. Within 18 months of the offer closing, we will have a clinical data readout from at least one phase two clinical study. This is the point in time when you find out whether a drug works or not. And it's also the point in time when investors see an inflection, a huge inflection point in the company, because you've, you've determined whether the drug works or not. Uh, so those are the two main things that investors will see that they may not probably seen a lot of biotech companies that are listed. Great, very exciting times ahead. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Glenn for joining me and the you, our viewers for watching. Just a reminder, you can use your smartphone to scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen to find the latest and all previous episodes of All Things Interview. I'm Blair Shen, see you next time.
家好，我是以诺，感谢收看今天的节目。如果您想要观看更多的奥采网视频节目，欢迎点击屏幕左边的播放列表。您也可以点击下方的按钮订阅我们奥采网 YouTube 频道，获取最新的澳洲财经资讯和评论。